Mad aristocratic upper crust tossers across the world are ripping their trousers off this morning and jumping on the bed riffing air guitar in a joyous global celebration of diversity and inclusivity thanks to an initiative by Jaguar. I know I was you know, riffing away quietly down there. However, there's just one small problem. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Logan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. <laughs> Straight out my website. Card. Jaguar and hashtag give her a crown empower six South African female creatives. This is brilliant when you think about it. It's exactly the kind of thing a completely irrelevant car maker should get behind and devote all of its available energy to. As a devout and admittedly woke feminist myself, I thank my deity of choice, Godo, like she's up there on the moon, I thank Godo that a company like Jaguar, as they say in America, just felt like Richard Nixon for a moment there. I, I don't know why. The Jaguar has joined this important fight. It's the only way women are ever going to earn the right to vote or get a university degree or get to keep the frickin' house after a husband and wife split up. Dude, all I want is equality. And without Jaguar's steady hand on the tiller, I fail to see that happening anytime soon. As Jaguar reimagines its all-electric modern luxury future within the JLR portfolio of brands, a focus on diversity and inclusion remain a top priority for the corporation. As a global business, building a rich and inclusive culture that reflects our communities is central to our commitment. As part of its strategy, the company has set several global objectives, including the target to have 30% of all senior leadership positions held by females by 2026. Well, that is rather exciting. There's a lot to unpack there, too. A. Any time a company uses the word reimagine in a press release. You can tell the intern has just unwittingly over-ordered the personal lubricant for the boardroom that month. Uh, B. Diversity and inclusion are not proper nouns, you jaguar twats. Standards certainly have slipped since the Indians took over in June of 2008, if memory serves, I'd suggest. But it is still called the English language, so you could at least attempt to make it look as if you are still British. And uh, C, 30% chicks calling the shots by 2026 at Jaguar. That's only 18 months away. How are we going with that? Hmm. This is Jaguar's board of directors. An unkind person might suggest that it's also a monument to human ugliness, but I make no comment either way on that. However, it appears to be only one female for every 6.5 board members. I did the maths on this. That's only 15.4% chick, which is pathetically uninclusive on a pro rata basis. Easier to talk it than walk it, I suppose. Eleven dudes, seemingly, although one never really knows. And in 18 months, only space for nine. Hmm. So you over there in the turtleneck. You designers always striving to look different. Only not in a good way, I note. I'd be cleaning out my desk if I were you. And you, oh, two slots over, with your frickin' shirt unbuttoned down to your virtual fucking navel, I'd be bringing a box to work between Christmas and New Year 2025, if I were you. Pro tip, how is this apparently arbitrary 30% target for the board, quote, 
building a rich and inclusive culture that reflects our community. I'm not seeing it, right? I'm just not. Is Coventry only, you know, 30% chick? Because that would explain a lot. Alternatively, you could just make the whole business a meritocracy. Less focus on the chromosomes and just get the best person for the job. Diversity and Inclusion Board co-sponsors Barbara Bergmeier and Francois Dossa Rhymes with uh, are also advocating for gender equality in the business and more widely in the industry. That's Frank right there, if you're interested. His job's pretty safe, I think, so, you know, well played, son. And Babs, well, she's just up there on top, appropriately enough. To Babs, I would say, hear, hear, lovey. More widely in the industry, indeed. Because as sorely as diversity and inclusion, with no fucking capital letters, is lacking in scientific art, I do hate women being repressed anywhere on earth. But I'd suggest this is hardly the front line of the battle for actual equality, is it? So why are we fighting here? This war's not going to be won during a skirmish for 14.6% more territory in this or that highly masturbatory boardroom in Coventry, that's for sure. If humanity is ever to achieve equality enlightenment, if only so extraterrestrials finally lift their fucking moratorium on contact, we need to take the fight to the real recalcitrant hot zones of male domination. If feminists are ever to achieve their objective of true equality across all of human society so that they can lay down their arms and live in harmony peacefully with the other half, which I'm certain is their objective, I'd suggest we urgently need more female hands on jackhammers, in quarries, screeding concrete thermite welding railway tracks endlessly in the busted ass Australian Pilbara or carbon arc gouging in the Gadanish ship breaking yard in Pakistan. There's a hell of a lot of work to do there, I know. Trades like boiler making and blacksmithing need to tear down their walls so that any young lady in middle school today dreaming endlessly of welding steel rebar in a strong crosswind precariously perched 15 stories above certain death doesn't have to bury her lofty ambitions and settle instead for working in air-conditioned comfort as personal assistant to the managing director. I fucking hate it when dreams get shattered like that. We clearly need more chicks driving the ladle in recycled aluminium foundries around the world and ejecting undesirables from seedy nightclubs at 3am. I, for one, say, fuck you, dude who hogs the limelight by glamorously unblocking the sewer, selfishly. What right do you have to prevent a young lady from enjoying the thrill you take for granted every day, that of climbing down the slippery steel rungs of a manhole? I mean, access chamber, sorry, no offence intended. Jesus. I mean, Gotto. What right do you have to prevent a young lady from enjoying the thrill you take for granted every day of climbing down the slippery rungs of an access chamber with a grubby nylon plunger clenched between your teeth on an exciting voyage of discovery deep? into the unknown, culminating in the orgasmic frenzy of dislodging a gigantic number two, which was gumming up the works and thus getting one of society's most vital networks back on track. That's on you, singing once again that system in the manner it's admittedly <coughs> all male designers intended. These, I would argue, are areas where Feminists are actually gagging for more equitable representation. The 2023 campaign will see each artist create a bespoke piece aligned with the theme of celebrating the exquisite details of women. I wholeheartedly embrace this concept also. Well done, Jaguar. Women and their details are, to me at least, exquisite. And they always have been. Therefore, in the spirit of solidarity and by way of 
olive branch extension, let me close this fine work of satirical investigative shit-stirring by firing my own shot in this war of attrition. And, at the risk of being branded an apostate, perhaps even a treasonous bastard by my sewer-unblocking brothers-in-arms, let me do my bit right now to help humanity, quote, celebrate the exquisite details of women. Please be upstanding. <laughs>